M19 is a globular cluster. I have a picture of it here. It's quite pretty. It's unusual in that if you look at it, actually you don't really need me to tell you, it's not round. And um, you know, the defining feature of globular clusters is that they're round. And this is actually the most elliptical globular cluster of all the globular clusters in the Milky Way. This is the astronomy picture of the day. If you've never been to astronomy picture of the day, well worth a look. Um, from 2000, and it actually has a bit of a description of it, and it says, the reason for the cluster's odd shape remains unknown, but might be related to the cluster's close proximity to the galactic center. Alternatively, the shape might be an illusion created by an unusual lane of dark absorbing dust on one side of the cluster. So I so this was 2000, and actually, we now, we think, know why it is this shape, and it's none of those explanations. So you wanna know why it's this shape? Okay, well, let's creep up on it slowly. So let me refer to a paper confirming the intrinsic abundance spread in the globular cluster M19 with calcium triplet spectroscopy. What do we think we know about globular clusters? Globular clusters, as I say, for one thing, they're usually round, this one isn't. But the other thing is that they're very simple in the sense that all the stars in them tend to be the same age and they tend to have the same metallicity, the same chemical abundances. The reason why we think that's the case is because all the stars in them probably formed almost all at once. They probably formed quite early in the lifetime in the Milky Way. Some gas cloud collapsed, formed lots of stars. It's just like a single generation of stars, so they're all formed out of the same gas, so they should all have the same properties as that gas. And the reason why that's probably the case is that globular clusters are sufficiently small that as soon as one star goes supernova, it kind of blows all the gas away and stops the process. So it's not like you can't have, so the way in galaxies, for example, we have stars with different chemical abundances is you kind of have multiple generations. You have one generation of stars, they then die, they kind of pollute the surrounding gas with heavy elements, and then that forms another generation of stars. So you can have all these different chemical abundances all within a single galaxy. That typically doesn't happen in globular clusters because it's just a single generation, you blow the thing apart, and all that's left is the stars, all the same age, all the same chemical abundances. So that's the story, except in this case it isn't, because if you then go and actually study, so the way you measure the chemical abundances of the stars is you take their spectra, so you split the light out into the colors of the rainbow, you see these little dark absorption lines due to the various chemical elements in the star that are absorbing some of the light that the star is emitting. And from the strength of those, that basically tells you how much of the chemical element there is. In that if there's a lot, it'll absorb a lot of the light, and so you have a, a very dark band. If it's only a little bit, it won't be so darkened. So that's what these guys have been doing. They've been doing it. So this calcium triplet that they refer to in the title of the paper is a set of three calcium lines in the infrared part of the spectrum. So you look at the near infrared and you can see these very strong absorption lines due to calcium. You measure how deep they are. That tells you how much calcium there is in the star. From that you infer what the heavy element abundances of the star are. And what they found is that in this particular cluster, all the stars don't have the same strength of these lines and therefore they don't all have the same heavy element abundances. In fact, they were just, you know, this had already been sort of tentatively discovered, but what these guys have done is they've looked at a much larger sample of stars and really confirmed, yes, it's definitely happening and been able to quantify it much better than had been done in the past. Within the globular cluster, unlike most globular clusters, there are variations from star to star in the chemical heavy element abundances, which means that simple picture I've told you of a single generation of stars can't be true for this particular globular cluster. And in fact, we think we know what it is that causes the exception in that this is one, there are now three examples of this phenomenon. So that's, that's this guy. The other two main examples of this phenomenon are Omega Centauri, which is another big globular cluster, which is also noted for not being round. So actually it also is somewhat squashed, not quite as squashed um, as this guy, but actually you know, still fairly squashed. And then the other one that shows the same effect is a globular cluster called M54, which actually is the nuclear star cluster in the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy, galaxy which is falling into the Milky Way at the moment. So it's not really a globular cluster at all, but in a billion years time, if you came back when the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy has been ripped to shreds, that little bit will be all that's left over. It'll look just like a globular cluster and it will have a spread in chemical elements abundances. And that's why in that case, we, you know, this, is, this guy is kind of the smoking gun because that kind of tells us that actually the way you make these things is that originally they weren't globular clusters, so you could have these multiple generations of stars because it was a whole galaxy worth of stuff, but then the whole of the rest of the galaxy has been ripped away and the, all that's left is this little nugget that's left over which we mistake in some sense for a globular cluster.
This is like the the tiny smoking remains of what was once a mighty galaxy. That's it. Well, it would probably been a fairly pathetic galaxy to start with, actually. But it's been, you know, it's a, it was a decent sized galaxy that kind of got ripped apart in the Milky Way. In some ways, is this not really a globular cluster? Possibly not. Well, I mean, it clearly is in that we've, you know, identified it as a globular cluster. And but it's it, what this is telling you is that there are probably more than one way of making a globular cluster and that this, this is probably a quite an unusual rope because it requires you to rip an entire galaxy to shreds. It's a bit wasteful to make one globular cluster, you've destroyed an entire galaxy. But there are at least two current examples in the Milky Way that seem to be the same thing and a third one on the way. Because the detail is just washed out. I'll give you an example. So in astronomy, we often put filters in our telescope, something like this, that will restrict the wavelength range of the light that's in